Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Our show is brought to you in part of the delicious Bluegrass Restaurant in Highland Park, uh, where they have amazing food and great service. And we had a delicious, delicious lunch. And I want to thank, for before we start our show, to our great director, Larry Beyer, who is always a wonderful director to our show, and our wonderful crew today, Ron Levitsky, Irv Walinka, and Julian Martinson. And now I want to introduce a marvelous guest. He's Professor Boas Johnson, Professor of Biblical and Theological Studies at North Park University in Chicago, who wrote an amazing book called The Marys of the Bible, the original Sorry to say, Me Too movement. Mm. It was a, a book, uh, Boas. It was a um, a book that I I never could imagine uh, what I read. I was kind of shocked mm. by the contents of the book, and relating it to what's going on today, the Me Too movement. Mm. Uh, mm. What's you know happening with uh, you know the the Harvey Weinstein of you know, film and studio, no. the Jeffrey Epstein, human mm -hmm. trafficking, young girls, uh, you know, into into sexual slaves. And I, I just, unreal. I mean, I, w I thought I was reading something that was happening today, and you wrote a lot what's happening. It was then, and it's, you know, if you look at the Bible, if you really study the Bible, you, you could actually hear and see what happened yesterday is happening today in many different things of the Bible. You know, women, slaves, all that stuff, and um, oh my God. Tell me, uh, how did you write this book? How did you get interested? And first of all, you're my first Boas. I've read about oh Boas in the Bible, <laughs> and so you're my first Boas. And you know, you're from originally from India. I am originally from India, yes, yes. I so. Uh, you know, th the, the ideas of this book have been shaping in my mind for a long time. I was reared in a New Delhi slum, and I saw friends of mine, both girls and boys, taken into sexual trafficking by high caste people, because the slum dwellers are displaced people, they are low caste, outcast people. As soon as girls got their first period, they were shipped off by high caste people into sexual slavery and and then I went on sabbatical um, last year um, a little more than a year ago I went to the Kakuma refugee camp where there's 800,000 people uh, in one camp um, and heard very sad stories I heard sad stories when I was teaching in Ukraine Odessa in um, Hungary, oh in Germany, and so I thought I have to write a book to address the issues of that the Me Too movement has brought before us um, from the Bible. So you you got interested. So you you were all over. You you taught in many. Did, did you did you have to learn their language too? Did you learn German and or did you you know in different places like Russia, Russian and. You know, the Ukraine, did you learn some of their languages too? Did you have to speak it or you just spoke English uh, mostly? Uh, I can teach in German. I can speak <coughs> French, read French, uh, but not all of these places. Mo most of my lectures, like in Ukraine, was uh, translated by a translator um, uh, or Portuguese mm -hmm. in Brazil. Um, but. Uh, and I would usually teach in English. That's my 
preferred language of mm -hmm. teaching because I cannot use, I can speak languages, but I can't use technical terms in I, those right, languages. Right, right, right. And so, um, you know, so what made you write the book? You know, how is it, you know, related to, you know, like you said, you came from the, the, the areas in India that, you know, you saw women getting raped. Yes, yes. Um, and it was very painful, I'm sure. It was a very, that's a very painful memory, knowing what was going on. And, you know, most of us don't even know things are going, you know, we, I guess maybe living in the United States, we live in such a sheltered environment. You know, you hear of things like, I just saw, you know, there's a lady, um, which I, I saw, you know, the, in the paper, I was just reading, uh, at, you know, in the Chicago mm -hmm. Tribune about a, uh, oh, one of the, um, what's her name, Mary McKellen, by the way, Mary. Mary. Mary yeah, McKellen, Mary, yes. yes, interesting, because you're talking about the Marys of the Bible. Yes. And Mary McKellen is running for, she's running for judge in Illinois, and they're referring to her as how the whole, the word whore shapes a oh, judicial yes. race. They're calling, she apparently had a child out of wedlock, and they're calling this poor lady that's running for office, she's running um, amongst other people, yeah. they're calling her names like whore, and I, you know, I, I made sure that we could say that word, uh, you know, and public, you know, television, you know, but uh, it's not, it's, it's not public, it's, um, uh, access, you know, we public access. Public yeah. access, yes. and my director said, "Go ahead and use it." Mm. So, mm. I I'm using it, but I it's such a the word is very traumatic to me. And how could they do that? How could they call this woman that name? And yet, in I'm reading every chapter from all these different, you know, in from the Bible, and this is what they, you know, I, I just want to read something from one of your uh, conclusions. Sure. It says. The Me Too movement is a powerful reminder of the abuses faced by women in our society today. In this book, I have tried to show that these abuses are global and have been global issues throughout the history of humanity. Sadly, ancient religions have been the basis of the abuse, and it is true of modern religious and modern secularism. And, oh my God, you know... Uh, it, 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 tell us a little bit about that and, and why you, you know, refer to as the Marys of the Bible. Well, you know, the, the word Mary is a very important name. In Hebrew, it means one who has endured bitterness or a lot of suffering. And, and what I've said in this book, the basic thesis of the book is that that is the core issue that both the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament are engaging with, how to bring about healing to women who have endured so much suffering. So I, I start off with the, the name of Jesus' mother. It was Miriam. Mm -hmm. You know, Miriam was the name of girls from the time of the Old Testament. Moses' sister's name was Miriam. Right. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was Miriam. Mm -hmm. um, when Jesus was on the cross, his disciples weren't there with him. All the people that were there with him, except for John the Baptist, one of the disciples, all the others were all women, mm -hmm. and they were all called Marys. So I said, why is it that all these women are called Marys, and, and why are they at the cross? And, and why is it that Moses' sister is called Miriam? And so I started researching ancient religions. I studied, I can read Ugaritic and hieroglyphics and those ancient oh languages. So I read those documents and every time they mention a woman, they would use negative jargon like you used here. Mm -hmm. Do you know that globally, whenever people want to call a person a bad new name, they will always use the name of the female animal. Oh my goodness, yes. Dog, female yeah, right, animal. Right, right, right. Pig, female animal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so, so, uh, cock and, and all those. It's always the female animal that's used to use 
uh, bad terms to describe right. a person. That's, that's, so, so that's why the Marys of the Bible, that's how you started. Actually, I found out that my own middle name, which is Maris, oh, yes. is from Mary. Okay, so yes. you're sitting with mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody with the same name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, women globally have gone through very horrible experiences. And that's what the Me Too movement mm -hmm. bring, brings before us. I teach at a university, and I know that at a university, so many women get raped, and usually it's in the first semester of their university experience. And when you say they get raped, they get raped by somebody at the school, they get raped by uh, somebody they know usually? Usually it is someone they know, yeah. someone they've just befriended, mm -hmm. usually a, a, you know, a junior or a senior at the university. And uh, it's horrible, it's horrible for a mm -hmm. woman to experience that. Unfortunately, you know, abuse of children is a big issue globally, all over the world. Uh, yes, it, it, and, and it's, it, you know, you say this, you know, sadly, most cry through history, violence between brothers or cousins, women and girls who bear the brunt of violence, sexual abuse also happens in the hands of their neighbors, their bosses, their colleagues, and like. Yeah. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned that God hears both kinds of cries of women. Um, why does it, why, you know, when it, we talk about, you know, in the Bible and God, why did God allow it to happen? You know, the sufferings and why did it, you know, I know that during, you mentioned during the Lord came down, Sodom and Gomorrah, this is why it always comes down to history. He sees, he hears, and knows the cries of abused women. And that's something that you wrote. Yeah. Uh, throughout the Bible, what I've seen is that God hears the cries of women. Mm -hmm. So Sodom and Gomorrah, you mentioned that story. In, in Genesis chapter 18, mm -hmm. God comes down. And Abraham, mm -hmm. the patriarch of uh, uh, the Pentateuch, uh, the Torah, uh, the Jewish people, uh, God speaks to Abraham and he says to Abraham, I've heard their cries. The word that is used there is the same word that is used uh, later on when God hears the cries of his people in Egypt. And he says to Moses, I've come down to deliver them because I've heard their cries. Who are these cries? These are cries of girls and boys being raped, like Moses' sister, Miriam. So you said, but you just mentioned boys too. Boys too, yes. And that was happening during, in Egypt, I think you were mentioning yes. uh, Egypt. And that the boys were used, you know, by the, um, by the uh, priests of pharaohs, the and pharaohs. Yeah. And th that was a traditional thing. They would, they would have parties and they would use young boys for dancing. Yes. And afterwards they would rape them. You read about that in Sumerian literature and Egyptian literature where it was um, something that had to do with their power. That's how they, they said they're powerful because you people who are enslaved, what you can, can you do about it? We have the power to rape your girls and your boys and you can't do anything so, about it. So rape ha is not really for pleasure, it's for power mostly throughout history and even today. You know, think about the Me Too right. movement. What's right. it about? Why are these people like Harvey Weinstein and others? Jeffrey Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein, yes. These are people who have power. They have money. Yeah, and they're and younger. They and, they, and they bring, what they do bring, like with Jeffrey Epstein, he bring, brought young teenage girls. Yes, yes. And with, uh, with Her Harvey Weinstein, he brought... He brought um, young female starlets, you know, young women that wanted to be into, they wanted to get into film, they wanted to get into plays, and he was very powerful, and he used his... That is true, and it's always been yes. like that. He, he didn't, in fact, they talk about it, he didn't make love to him, they kind of, he, he kind of abused him. Yeah. He, he wasn't gentle with them at all, he was very mean. Most of these rapes are not about gentleness and uh, love and, no. you know, it's, it's about power and, 
you know, who can be more powerful. Yeah, how can it be? This is not love. This is lust, lust for power, greed for power, and abusing that power. Um, you know, the very first story in the book of Genesis is Genesis chapter 3. And if you ask an average person, the average person will say that, oh, it was Eve who disobeyed God. You know, oh, it wasn't ate, Adam. Because she ate the apple. Yeah, she ate anyway. the apple. But they, they don't read ancient literature. I wish people would. Because this has nothing to do with the apple tree. It was, if you read Sumerian religions and Egyptian religions and Indian religions, ancient Indian religions, it always had to do with a fig tree. The fig tree. The fig tree? And okay. the people would be given a drink. The girls would be given a drink from the fig tree, an intoxicating drink. And then people like Pharaoh and the priests would rape them. And usually it was a virgin. Wasn't it? Uh, what's his name? Bill Crosby. He before he raped his victims, yes. his girls, he gave them a drink. He gave them something to intoxicate them. Yes, the yes. same thing. And here was a man that we people used to watch his shows and think uh, so highly of him. Yes. And then we find out that he was intoxicating young women. I mean, women that would go up to his apartment, and they probably could have. He could have had these women without doing. I mean, he you know being loving and everything. They, you know, and have girlfriends. He didn't have to, you know, abuse them and intoxicate them. So it had nothing to do. Then you think about it. Why didn't he do that? But then again, listening to you, I understand it had nothing to do with loving them no, and having girlfriends and having a romantic relationship. It had something to do with power. It you did. It always has been the case. Romans, the Assyrians, the Persians, they raped women wherever they went and conquered places. They would take girls and rape them because rape was a method of war. And that's what they did during the time of Jesus. As I was well. just wondering why they, you know, they didn't hide their daughters, knowing, you know, the mothers and, you know, why did they hide them? There was nowhere to hide them, was it? I mean, what did they do? Because not everybody got raped. How did some of the ones that didn't get, you know, what, what did, how did they, how did they hide them, or what did they do to? So these lady, these women, these young girls didn't get, you know, violated. The poor people in these areas like Nazareth and Bethlehem and all that, they would try. But you have to remember, the Romans were ruthless. They knew how to overpower these people. And in their ruthlessness, they would do horrible things. So was it only the Romans? or Because it seemed like other figures, you know, in the, when I was looking in uh, the Bible here, some of the things that you brought up, weren't yes. just Romans. They yes. were, they were priests of the, of the churches and the synagogues, weren't they? They weren't just, they weren't just uh, your Romans. Well, so in, in the book itself, I go right through the Hebrew Bible and I talk about David. Yeah. David was a king, highly regarded by a lot of people. And that is true. He was, as when he was a kid, he was a shepherd boy, and he did really good stuff. Mm -hmm. But when he became king, that went to his head, and he said, I've got to be like the other kings. If other kings have women, why can't I? And so he raped the wife of a foreigner who was a Hittite. He raped her and then got her husband killed. In the Hebrew Bible, it's so powerful because... It seems very clear to me as I read the Hebrew that Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, he looks David in the eye and say, I know what you did. Hmm. And he went and he got killed because of what David did. Yeah, how can we never learn this? You know, um, you know, most of us have gone to Sunday school. Some of the women have gone and had bat mitzvahs and there's bar mitzvahs and you know, we studied the Bible and people, but it ha that has not been brought out. Why mm -hmm. is that? Did you, you know, how come, the, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? Sure. Why, I, I why has nobody brought that out? And all the people that go to these Sunday schools and, and even go to church or go to synagogues and, you mm -hmm. know, why hasn't this been brought out? 
because we want heroes. We want to tell stories of heroes. But the Bible is so clear, it tells you the truth. And it says, yes, David, you were God when you were younger and when you became a king in the first years. Solomon, another one. Solomon was fine when he was younger. He had wisdom. He did a lot of good stuff. But when he grew up, he had a thousand wives. Come on, Solomon. How but can I said, you have a thousand wives? But I, but I read Boas, which is your yes, name after. Yes. He did not do that. He was very kind to women. Because I remember reading the story about Boaz and Naomi. Yes, yes. I, and that is another good thing about the Bible. It, t it tells the truth. Here is this guy. He is called Chayil. And um, there is a woman. And her name is Ruth. There's another woman. That's right, Ruth. Yes. I think it was Ruth. Was it Naomi or Ruth? That uh, he, Naomi is the, the mother-in-law. Mother -in yes. And that's the one he was... Uh, very fond of, right? Was it Naomi? Well, or was Ruth, it, or was and it Ruth? Orpa is the other young lady. Mm -hmm. In the Hebrew Bible, in English translation, it says that the sons of Elimelech married Moabite women in Ruth mm -hmm. chapter 1 mm -hmm. and verse 4. The Hebrew word there is Nasa, which means he lifted them up. They lifted them up into places of uh, temple prostitution, it is called, and abuse them mm. for 10 years. Oh, my God. But Naomi saw all this and mourned with her daughters-in-law. Mm. Mm -hmm. And so Ruth wanted to stick with Naomi. They come back to Bethlehem, mm -hmm. the place where Jesus was born, and all the young men are looking at this woman. Boaz looks at the young men and says, don't you dare touch her. Mm -hmm. Yes, she is a foreigner. She speaks in a foreign accent, but don't you dare touch her. The story is so powerful at the end of the book of Ruth. There, there are two laws in the Torah. One is called leveret marriage, and the other one is called the law of kinsman redeemer. In leveret marriage, someone is supposed to be marrying this young woman so that he would protect her. Mm -hmm. And the law of kinsman redeemer is you're supposed to be buying back the property so, for the young woman. So if you got married, your husband would protect you against anybody that would come after you. Yes. And so Boaz was a protector. See, your mother named you after the right person. That is true. That was very kind of her. Yes. And I look up to my mother so much. Right. You know, there was another part that you, you wrote it, that was written that you wrote um, mm -hmm. and about women, which was real interesting. If a wife robs her husband yeah. when he's dead, she is to be put to death. The receiver of the property is to be put to death. If a husband is alive, he may punish his wife as he likes. If, he's, if the receiver is a slave, he or she loses both nose and ears, yeah. and the husband may cut off his wife's ears. I mean, this is like when a woman squanders her husband's possessions, she destroys his honor, so she must die by drowning. And mm. a temple priest, priestess, priestess, prostitute, who enters a public space must be put to death by fire. Oh my God, I'm looking at this. I said, what is this? Yeah. I've never heard of this before. Now, this is the code of Hammurabi. You know, in our high schools and middle schools, pe kids are taught about the code of Hammurabi. Like that was the first code of ethics being written. But what is not taught is the code of Hammurabi is absolutely the worst kind of code of ethics. And what is Hammurabi? What Hammurabi is was a Babylonian king. Okay. And he came up with this code, his people did, so that women can be denigrated to... And, and they cut off their ears? They did. And their nose? Yes. Oh, my God. This and that's why the Bible says, no, the woman is created in the image of God. Then, when God creates the woman, she is called an Ezer Konegdo. Mm -hmm. The word Ezer is always used of God in the rest of the Bible. The woman is no this down, low being, as is recorded in the Code of Hammurabi. She is like a divine figure that God has created, who walks ahead of man. That's what Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18 says. But 
another thing is when women are abused, mm. they are completely destroyed psychologically, yeah. mentally, spiritually, and physically. Yes, that's true, and that's what they did in ancient religions. Sumerian religions, Egyptian religions, Syrian religions, and yes, today's society as well. People don't realize what really happens to these women, yeah. you know, when they're abused at such a young age. And I mean, look at this. He, you know, it's, it's mentally and physically and it's psychologically, and they're damaged the rest of their lives. They are. They are. When I go back to India, I work with an organization that rescues women from sexual slavery. And when I first see them, you look into their eyes and you see nobody oh because they've been destroyed. This is, uh, by the way, I just want to show our viewers, this is an amazing book. And it's called The Marys of the Bible. And it's the original Me Too movement. Hmm. And, and it's written by Boas Johnson. Professor Boas Johnson, Dr. Boas Johnson, mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, it was it's beautifully written, and it's uh, it tells the truth. It tells things that nobody else nobody else taught us in school before. Mm -hmm. And I understand that you're read that you're also writing a sequel to this book. I am because there's only so many women I could talk about in one book. There's so many more. There's Esther. There is uh, uh, the women ha called Hagar during the time oh, of Hagar, Abraham. Yes. So I want to write a lot about uh, other women in the Bible mm -hmm. from whom we can learn. Yeah, that people know about more. You know, Esther. They hear of Esther. Yes. They hear of Sarah. They hear of Hagar. You know, these are some of the names that we hear more. You know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, we we learn about Ruth and Naomi, but there are you know the the names that you're talking about now is another. You know, so the sequel will be uh, similar to this. And is there going to be something new that you're going to be looking at? Well, I'm looking at a lot of, uh, one of the projects I'm working on is this, the poetry of women that have come out of sexual slavery. It's so powerful to see their thoughts. It's like lamentations and like Song of Songs. Mm -hmm. 